It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the coach. Our friend FFP writes in, I have a student almost no other students want to train with, nor hold pads for him. They feel unsafe as he is too wild and stiff and out of control with his techniques. Learning to be smoother is his biggest challenge, in my opinion. How can I teach him this? other than to say repeatedly, relax, more control, look at the target, go slower, and so on. That's a great question. How many times have you folks at home heard your coach say things like that? Relax, focus, breathe, all this other stuff that, uh, well, maybe not breathe. We'll get into that in a minute. All this other stuff that just puts you more on edge and you're like, I was relaxing, I thought I was relaxed. And then you just get stiffer and more agitated telling an anxious person to relax i don't think has ever helped anybody relax in the history of ever it's like telling a depressed person just be happy and that never goes over well because these these are processes somebody asked me in my last live stream how do i deal with anxiety and stress and i asked them why are you anxious and stressed. Look at the root of the problem. Now I could give you some, some really, really general advice like breathe and meditate and go on a long relaxing walk or something like that. But then when the actual problem that is causing you anxiety emerges, maybe you're Maybe you're anxious, maybe you're stressed out because of something that's happening at work or in your home or you're mismanaging your time. And when the reality of that settles in, that long walk on the beach and those breathing exercises and that yoga and all that stuff isn't going to cut it, is it? Because you're going to have to deal with the actual problem again. So nip the problems in the bud as much as you can, as soon as you can. Because all the relaxation techniques in the world are a band-aid fix compared to that. But what's really going on with somebody in a, a martial arts class who shows up, who's just kind of wild and tense and ah, they're, they're going too hard and they're hurting people or they're missing the pads and punching in the face or kicking you in the groin. Pro tip, when you're holding pads, always wear a Thai steel cup because you will get kicked in the groin. You will. This has happened to me multiple times, many times over the years. Holding pads for people. All right, throw a jab right here. Your left hand, nice straight punch right here at my left hand. I'm going to catch it like that. Okay, coach. Boom! Kick right to the groin. That was not a jab. One time in particular, I was holding pads for this girl. I'm like, all right, throw a nice straight punch right up here. She's like, okay. And she throws a roundhouse kick right in my groin. Of course, I'm wearing a Thai steel cup. And she recoils in pain as she bangs her foot against the steel cup in my groin. She's like, ow, oh, oh. And I'd, I felt zero sympathy. No sympathy whatsoever. For her situation because she created it we are the creators of our own paradigms my friends we are the creators of our own paradigms so what is the paradigm of this anxious person he hasn't learned how to move yet the big advantage that children have learning martial arts as children over adults isn't the fact that they learn how to fight as children they don't not really they learn how to move and a lot of grown-ups in the civilized world haven't learned how to do that. They are kinesthetically retarded. That means slow development. It's not a pejorative term. Kinesthetically, you know what that means? There's a type of intelligence, kinesthetic bodily intelligence. It is essentially how smart you are at moving your body, at living in the physical universe and moving around. And if your daily routine consists of getting up out of bed, going to sit on the toilet for a minute, getting up and walking over to the kitchen table, sitting down, looking at your phone, eating something hunched over like this, getting up, going to your car, 
sitting in that car chair driving down the road because of course we're just veering all over the road left and right when we drive right banging into everybody causing automobile accidents everywhere as we go why is it that we always use this as like the uh the pantomime gesture for driving a car what kind of road are we on moving a steering wheel like this anyway back on track here so you drive to work probably not even moving the steering wheel other than occasionally turning like that very little movement you get to your office job you sit down in a cubicle you hunch over you type you pick up your phone once in a while and check a message maybe you get on a phone and put it down and not a lot of movement or maybe you work at a factory and you stand there for 12, 14, 16 hour shifts at a conveyor belt, putting something on there. Eh, next, 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 next. As your mind just goes numb and your body doesn't get a chance to move. And what does that train our body to do? To be stiff and not relaxed and stressed and not move and not move very well and not move intelligently. And so... After work, what do we do? We drive over to the gym. Da, 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 da. I'm assuming you guys have cars. I don't. I haven't driven a car for 12 years. And it's awesome. Not being bound to a vehicle like that. It's amazing. I wish more people in, in the world could put themselves in, the, in a situation where they do not need a car anymore that would be amazing that would do all kinds of wonders for the world i digress so you drive over to the gym after your anxious day of anxiously holding still at work and then you're expected to move as if you've been doing this since childhood all right hit the pad right here and the brain's like okay okay and then the body's like my leg is moving over there why am i kicking my coach in the groin what's happening here ah it's not that unusual. This is going to take time. When you have that anxious, stiff guy who is a danger to himself and others, it takes time. And you've got to be very patient with it. And a lot of martial arts coaches are not very patient people. You know, especially when, especially in boxing gyms. Man, in boxing gyms, it's like you throw everybody into the mix, like bug fights put a bunch of bugs in a jar shake them up watch them fight and then you know the uh the strongest ones who are already the best movers the best at avoiding damage and doling it out those are the ones who rise to the top above the corpses of the others and the boxing coaches are like yep that's gonna save me a lot of time teaching the wimps and being patient with the people who don't already know how to fight a little bit because it's much easier to coach somebody who's already athletic versus somebody who isn't but that's not your job, right? You're there to help everybody as best you can, right? In many ways, that's a much better business model to help everybody as best that you can. To change some lives in positive directions. I've gone on for eight minutes about what the problem is so far. Now let's address some fixes and some simple things that you can do to start to change that. Now, you can't go and change this guy's life and his working routine and his, the way he moves, moves at home. You can ask him to. In fact, the first thing I would ask this guy to do, shadow box at home by yourself when nobody is telling you to and do it three rounds a day. Three rounds of shadow boxing every single day and hold him to it. This is something I've seen many times, people who just absolutely sucked at moving. And I ask them to do the same thing I ask professional fighters to do, which is shadow box three rounds every day on your own, on your own time, of your own free will and volition when nobody's telling you to, when nobody's watching. And make sure you do that. It's easy. It takes you just a few minutes. You don't need any equipment. You don't need a lot of room. And what happens? Over time, those people improve dramatically. And they learn how to relax and be less stiff. And 
they get a lot of extra time implementing what you teach them. You teach them a new combination, a new footwork pattern, a new movement, and they start to do that while they are shadow boxing. And they get more reps. And then they come back and they're more fluid. And they're more relaxed. Because again, telling people to relax doesn't relax anybody. Showing people how to move, on the other hand, does. Breathing, that's another thing. A lot of people are stiff and not relaxed because they're not breathing. They flex everything. They clench their teeth. They clench their butt. They clench their arms. They squeeze their fists inside the gloves. And, and they hold their breath. And then they become very tired and very angry and upset and more anxious because they're tired and they're squeezing everything. So one simple tip to help remedy that is breathe. Exhale a little bit with every movement, especially every percussive movement. There's a direct connection between breath and movement. Percussive movement, like a punch. <gasps> percussive breath. <gasps> Do you hear that? So we're letting about 20% of the air out. <gasps> Not all of it, just, just a little bit. And as we're letting that out, we're flexing the abs a little bit. We're projecting power outward. And we're also relaxing what needs to be relaxed while tensing up what needs to be tensed. Another thing, think about what a punch is. If I'm squeezing every muscle in my arm while I am extending my arm forward, what's happening? I'm slowing myself down. I'm putting the brakes on that punch and I'm making it a lot harder than it needs to be. If I relax my hand comple completely, get nice and floppy and loose, and then I squeeze my hand into a fist at the moment of impact, whoom, something very different has just happened. Now it's fluid, now it's relaxed until it doesn't need to be, and then I relax again. Whoom, tight, loose, loose, tight, loose, loose, tight, loose. And combine that movement with breath. Now, it takes time. This is not an instant fix for somebody who doesn't know how to relax, but it is the instruction to point them in the right direction and make sure they're shadow boxing like this. Inform them to shadow box like this at home by themselves when nobody's watching. Again, connect their breath and their movement and their footwork. Man, that's another thing. If you're not, con if you're not connecting your footwork to your strikes, for example then what are you relying on to generate power? You're relying on upper body strength to try to swing your arms around, and punches are not swings. Good technique goes a long way to fix anxious movement. So... One thing that will help him relax be relaxed yourself. And that can be hard to do when faced with an anxious person who's potentially going to hurt you while you're trying to just hold pads from him. Chill out, buddy. I'm not the enemy. Hit the pads, not my face. Come on, bro. But the energy that you project is going to rub off on those around you. So always check yourself a little bit. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.